Hello everyone, and welcome to another Clash of Clans video. Today, we are in a scrimmage match between One Hive and Tribe Gaming. Rosters being Tricky, Matty J, Eric, Sebix, Me, versus Itsu, Hex, Lex, Nick, and Evecheck. So I guess this is an opportunity for Tribe Gaming to try and figure out who their fifth player is. And we're gonna start off by looking at all the bases. So Itsu's running a ring base, Hex is running a pretty standard anti-3, so is each check. And so is Nick. So Hex's base, they had the Town Hall and the Eagle really close together, just like this one with Lexnos. So the Town Hall and the Eagle were close together. And then three Infernos spread out in other directions. So now we're going over to a live attack. About 15 minutes into the war. So Matty J against Nick. I've seen this base a couple of times. I'm not sure exactly where it's from, but I think I've seen it like in Legend League, etc. Might be might be one of mine, but I don't even know. So not sure exactly what the idea with the jump spell is. Well maybe I do. So it would be really hard to get the wall breakers to attack that outside wall in the position that he wanted. Because the queen might have walked over to the right hand side. Over by the bomb tower. If he had wall broken sort of by 4 o'clock instead of right at 6 where he dropped the dump spell. Then he's creating the funnel over at 9 o'clock. And I think that's where he's going to drop all the miners, or the hog riders instead. So this is a really, really powerful attack strategy. It's actually what I'm planning to use on my attack in this war. The hog miner hybrid strategy. So what's really powerful about this is that the hogs and the miners sort of alternate tanking. Which means that you don't need as much healing for as if it was only hog riders or only miners. But miners don't need a hell of a lot of healing either. So it's kind of like an increase to damage on miners or an increase of HP on hogs. So that, that's what makes it really powerful. So he's using his last heal spell. He has the royal cloak or the royal champion ability that he's going to use right now and that takes out a couple of buildings on the top side so the hogs don't have to spend any time going over there and this is going to be the first three star of the war now these bases aren't quite maxed out but they're pretty good for the standard that we have at the moment and let's kick it let's kick it over to my base that i selected so this is hex and what I'm going to do is sort of similar to what Mandy J just did. So I'm going to have the queen coming in on the gold storage at 5 o'clock. And then we'll have the king on the gold storage at 6 o'clock to funnel the queen in. For the queen, we're going to have wall breakers into that king compartment where the town hall is. And then the queen's going to follow in. And we'll have a jump spell for the expo, the expo and the air defense. And that'll get the slingshot, the eagle artillery, and maybe the queen. And then after that, we will have the siege barracks and all the miners and hog riders coming in from 8 o'clock by the double cannon, or by the two, can two outside cannons, the max outside cannons. And then they'll go into the single inferno and just walk around the base sort of in an L shape. Which is sort of what you're trying to do with most of these, like Hog Rider or Miner or Lalo attacks. You're trying to create an L shape, as we've been saying for a long time. So, that's the plan. And now I think it's time to look at Eric's attack on Evecheck. So, this is yet another live attack. And after this, I'm going to do my own attack, right after this attack. So, then you'll see what I was planning. So, Warden Walk at 3 o'clock. 
it's going to take a long time to get to the Inferno Tower. So I'm not sure if he's going to try and do that. Or save some time and just clear out the funnel for the Yetis and the Pekkas. So Yeti and Pekka Smash are really insanely powerful. Like, actually overpowered. Because even... Even without any training or any skill or any any practice, you can get a lot of triples with Yeti Smash. So I'm expecting a nerf to that before the competitive ESL competitive season starts. As for other competitions that I'm part of, we have the CCL League, which is a giant, like, 40-40, 50v50 league. And the first war is actually going to be King Jeffrey and LP4 Hades versus WHF. And that's going to start in a couple of days. So get ready for that. I might actually live stream that. As Eric loses a lot of his... A lot of his troops to the Giga Tesla bomb. Or the Giga... Giga bomb. What is that called? Is it still called the Giga Bomb, even though it's a Giga Inferno? I think it is. So I think that's where this attack goes wrong. And Tesla Farm in the back doesn't help any. So that's. I guess that's the problem there. The troops that he dropped on that jump spell up at the top just weren't close enough to the Warden to attract him back to the Town Hall. So that's where that went wrong. So that's going to end in like a 70 or 80%, something like that. But getting back to the future. So we have the CCL League, and that's starting immediately. So, and then we have maybe a month or two later, we're going to have the Champions War League back for Champions War League Elite and Mini Elite or Premier or Invite. Whatever leagues that I can get myself into, and then I can get some clans. And hopefully I can make some videos on, uh, on that. So yeah, this is a really slow ending. I might just speed it up. And then we'll go into my attack. I don't think I was even looking at the tablet when I was recording this, this attack in particular. I was just waiting for... I was just looking at the screenshot of my base waiting for that to attack to end. So here we have my army. 12 hogs, I think like 17 miners, yeah. And so we started off with the king. Well, it started off with the funnel, which includes the baby dragon. Baby dragon, then the king. And then the queen. And right here you're going to see something a little bit tricky. Taking with the loon and healers don't quite make it to the queen but the enemy king starts attacking her and then that saves the raid a little bit so what I could have done to fix that was if the king if the enemy king didn't quite make it in time I could have popped the king ability and then the cannon at the inferno tower compartment or the inferno kick inferno compartment would have targeted the queen and then the healers would have switched back to the queen so it wasn't a it wasn't like a raid ending thing right there that if the king wasn't there if the enemy king wasn't there that wouldn't have ended the raid but it helped a little bit so we have some really weird um, CC comp super easy for a queen to deal with that's not yet on the inside of the base so we have the jump spell right to the enemy eagle and the queen and now we're getting ready to drop the Siege Barracks and the Miners and the Hogs. So Queen's working on the Scatter Shot. And now the enemy Queen. And we're going to drop the Royal Cloak pretty early because there are problems with the Queen and getting the, the um, ability off. So here I made a bit of a mistake with the Jump Spell. The Queen should have... The queen is going to die in this compartment. And what I could have done to fix that is dropping the jump spell a little bit, like two tiles left uh, towards 6 o'clock. 
so she doesn't throw, go into this three by three compartment and then get attacked by the warden and stuff. She could have helped out with the expo in the middle and the sweeper in the middle and stuff like that. But no matter. There are plenty of hog riders, plenty of miners in the middle and flecking around the outside and the hogs because the the funnel at the trash buildings at 12 o'clock weren't really taken out what's really nice about this hybrid strategy is that the hogs keep going even though the miners get distracted so if you have enough hogs at the end of the raid you can still save it so that's that that's two triples down and a two star. Now we're going to take a look at Sebex on Lexnos, right at the end of the war. So this is a very, very similar base. So he's going to use a kind of similar attack. Queen charge against the enemy king. And funnel at 12 with the, with the friendly queen, king. Then he's going to wall break into this compartment over here. And that'll give access to the scattershot, the expo, and he brings a lot of wall breakers. So then he can break into the second layer, like, so he can break by the expo and by the scattershot. So he can get to the inferno as well. But the scattershot gets a lot of attacks off on the wall breakers so it takes a lot of them it takes a lot of them in order to get just the first layer so another rage on the queen and a couple of wall breakers hopefully at some point one of them's gonna get through but one of them actually gets to the town hall compartment which is very interesting that's not quite what he was after but it's going to help him a little bit, actually. So Queen with the Royal Ability is going to be able to get an attack off on the Giga Inferno. And with the Hogs under Warden Ability, it's not going to do any damage to them. And Queen's probably going to die off here due to the Warden. Or, or she's going to go off to the side and help with cleanup. So on this, on this attack, he decided to go with the Stone Slammer. And that's probably because that's a flanking area on the base. So then the Hogs didn't have to go to the outside area to take out those defenses. Instead, the Stone Slammer was actually able to do that. And so, Hog Riders were able to clean up the rest of the base pretty easily. And with the Queen on cleanup, there's going to be no time issues at all. Stone Slammer actually avoided a lot of ground bombs uh, right at the end there. A lot of giant bombs. So there we go. That's triple number three. Let's see what else is going on in the war. Fourteen. So we actually got the triple on Itsu as well. There's a couple of attacks to choose from. We have Hex getting a one star on Eric. Really unfortunate for him, man. We're going to check out the defense on me. If you want the link to this base, it's going to be down below, but I'm not sure if you're going to want the link, <laughs> to be honest. But Lex is a great attacker, so even though this is going to triple, maybe it'll work for your wars. A lot of people were, I don't know about upset, but like disappointed by my first war base for Town Hall 13 that I made a separate video for instead of the link based video. So I'm the reason for that is we didn't know how good the spammy strategies were gonna be at the time that I built it. And it got a lot of defenses in the Carbon versus Eric War, so I thought I'd cover it anyway. But it seems like the regular old Pekka Smash got a lot of triples on it. So here, this is going to be a little bit harder to P.E.K.K.A. Smash, but like it is a very thin pathway for these miners, so it does work really well for that. 
or it does it works badly for that <laughs> okay so the queen was able to get the town hall it was kind of close so this could have one start as well um but with the warden ability and the healers on the miners it probably wouldn't have maybe maybe not you just don't know so if you want the link to the space this is going to be down below So the miners working on the last of the minor, or la last of the inferno towers, and then level 20 royal champion is just going to clean up the rest of the base. Really, she could have done this on her own actually, if time permitted. So in the next few days, I'm going to be working on a legend league base and a war base. I'm not sure if I'm going to have that all done, and that's going to be the end of the war. But I'll try to get it done. So, that's the end of the war. 14 to 11 is the final score. Tribe Gaming versus One Hive. One Hive comes out victorious. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I've been Ray's Gaming, and I'm out.